Welcome to the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, founder of the Reiki Business Collective and creator of the Build Your Reiki Business Program, sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business. Greetings, welcome, and thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, so honored and grateful to have you here, so thank you so very much. In this week's episode, we're talking about cold outreach, cold outreach for your Reiki business. Now, exactly what is cold outreach? What the heck does that mean? Well, cold outreach is a sales technique. Now, I know you're probably thinking, ooh, sales, ick. Let me tune in to a different episode, turn off this podcast. I don't like to talk about sales. But even if it's not something that you want to do, it's something that it's important for us to know about and to be aware of. And so in this episode, I'm going to talk about cold outreach, what it is. Uh, I'm going to talk about how you can use it in your Reiki business if you decide to, how to do it well, and what not to do in cold outreach too. Now, even if we might not know exactly what cold outreach is, and even if we've never used it in our Reiki business, you, we all indeed have received cold outreach messages. Oftentimes, cold outreach will take the form of spam. Spam typically is cold outreach. And so if you're receiving emails that you uh, did not sign up for, or they're coming from someone you don't know out of the blue, that's technically spam. And so, for instance, I get emails in my Reiki business from different vendors. Oftentimes, I'll get people who are uh, have their own uh, appointment setting business, and they'll send me a cold email or a cold message on uh, social media and introduce themselves and say, I set appointments. Do you have enough appointments? Do you need more appointments? I can help you with that. That is cold outreach. And if you go to your inbox and look at your spam folder, you'll find a lot of cold outreach there. And so we've all received cold outreach. And so we know that cold outreach can feel kind of crummy and feel kind of spammy because oftentimes it is. But cold outreach is also a specific sales technique that is taught in all kinds of industries. And cold outreach is when we reach out to a stranger to let them know about our services or products. And so the term cold is used uh, to mean that they don't know who you are. They don't know what you do. Maybe they've never heard of you. They aren't familiar with you. Um, you are cold to the business. And as this is opposed to a warm outreach where the you already know the business, they're already familiar, you're already familiar with them, have had contact with them, or have heard of them. That's warm outreach. And um, so this is probably more of what you do or have done in your Reiki business. And quite frankly, warm outreach works better, especially for the kind of business we have with Reiki, um, where let's face it, we're a little bit more touchy-feely than other kinds of industries. Well, I'm a little bit more (laughs) touchy-feely. Probably you are too. But warm outreach often works better for a Reiki business than cold outreach. But Cold outreach can work for a Reiki business too. The problem is that so often cold outreach is done in a spammy, scammy kind of way. And cold outreach isn't done effectively in order to yield results. One of the things that is challenging about using cold outreach is our belief that We don't want to bother people and that people don't want to hear from us and that 
we don't want to reach out to strangers because we don't want to come off as pushy. We don't want to come off as uh, being insensitive. We don't want to come off as being spammy or scammy. Absolutely, we do not want to do these things because not only is it bad for our business, but it's also just not nice, right? Like who likes to um, be spammed and even potentially scammed? This is like when someone shows up at your door and knocks on it and they are selling something, whether that is um, solar panels or windows or the latest school fundraiser. This is an example of cold outreach that not necessarily feels really good and feels kind of weird. I don't know about you, but I've had cold outreach people show up on my doorstep who are trying to convert me to their religion. I will say that I do talk to them. <laughs> Why the heck not? <laughs> Um, but, uh, and I also want to say to them, you know, you're not, it's not going to work. I'm sorry. I'm just having a nice chat, but it's not going to work. <laughs> but that's an example of cold outreach to give you an idea of exactly what it can look like. But we can use cold outreach in our Reiki business. Now I have recently received some cold outreach messages. And so I want to share them with you. Not the full messages themselves, but just the idea of them. In order to give you an idea of what kinds of cold outreach you might receive as a Reiki business owner, and also to encourage you on ways that you might not want to approach cold outreach and how you might want to improve it if it's something that you want to do. But first, in order to use cold outreach, we have to get over the idea that, um, strangers, people are going to think that we're pushy, that we think that we are bothering them and that we're being a nuisance. We don't have to be doing any of those things when we do cold outreach. It's very easy to be pushy or bothersome or a nuisance, but we don't have to be when we do cold outreach. I received a very recent cold outreach message from a younger person. And I have a special place in my heart for younger people. I spent many years as a college professor. And so uh, I, I really um, appreciate and like working with college aged young people. And this young guy reached out to me and he sent me a DM and he's like, so this is random. Ha ha. But this company that I'm working for this summer wants me to get some business experience to build my resume for the future. I'm looking for people who will let me show them my presentation. That's why I'm reaching out kind of randomly, LOL. Okay, now keep in mind, I have no idea who this person is. <laughs> I, they're a friend of a friend on Facebook, reached out to me with this kind of message. And I'm just like, oh, kid. I, you know, I know you're trying to put yourself out there. I know you're trying to, to do things, but this is not the way to do it. And so I sent him a message back saying, hey, I understand your need to conduct code outreach, but this is not the best method. And I asked him flat out, is this the script that the company gave you? Because it's awful. And I encouraged that he reconsider the tactics that he's using. And so uh, he re replied that it's the best method because it's the only method I have. I have no other sources. Yes, uh, I have, I'll, I'll change some things, but I have to say that this message is not as bad as you say it is. <laughs> so he's like, but if you have any tips, please do let me know. So I responded with the message that with, with his message. So, you know, I know you don't know me. I'm sorry to bother you, but, and then launched into letting him know that I, him, me as him was looking for the opportunity to get some experience with my public speaking skills and improving my confidence. I'll share with you one more recent cold outreach message that I received, and this was via email. And this was from someone who uh, 
was looking to affiliate with me, to partner with me, to um, promote their program. And the I, I appreciate, I appreciate people who put themselves out there with cold outreach. So I appreciate this young guy who messaged me. I appreciate this person who sent me a, an email about affiliating, being an affiliate for their program. I appreciate the cold outreach because it's not easy to do. It takes a lot of guts and courage. And yet there are better ways that we can do it. So this email that I received um, is not a bad email at all, but it has no personalization whatsoever, period. Like I know that this email, even though they say to me, I deeply thank you for your work and your authenticity and your vulnerability and your courage. I found your messages to be such magical inspiration. I don't believe that. I know that this email is simply a copy and paste to everyone that this person is trying to partner with because there's no personalization here. And so what makes cold outreach not good and makes it sound scammy and spammy is this lack of personalization, is the fact that it is truly cold. And it's so cold that there's no effort on the sender's part, on the outreacher's part to help make it personalized and to make it not so cold or to not feel so spammy or scammy. The ways in which you can use cold outreach in your Reiki business are yes to uh, have affiliate possibilities. So reaching out to someone to partner, to uh, share their services or course if they share your services and course. Honestly, this is best done with people who you already know because I don't know about you, but I'm not promoting anyone's stuff who I don't know already and who I don't already know, like, and trust. Like I am not going to promote anyone's stuff who I don't already have a positive relationship with. And that takes time to build. And so, yes, you can use it for uh, having people who share your stuff and you share theirs. But I really want to caution us uh, about sharing other people's stuff without being familiar with that person because there's a lot of not good stuff out there. We can also use cold outreach to let people know about our services. So to just reach out to people and say, hey, uh, are you interested in learning about Reiki? Or I have this course, maybe it might be a good fit for you. Or can I interest you in some Reiki infused jewelry? So we can use it specifically to let people know about our services. But it's not always the best way to conduct cold outreach to let people know about our services if we don't already have some indication that they might be interested in our stuff. And so targeting is very important in cold outreach. What I mean by targeting is knowing who you are sending your message to and having a pretty good idea that it's going to be something that they're interested in. Now, I'll give you an example of this. With the Reiki Business Summit, I am conducting cold outreach. So what I'm doing is I'm sending out a message to Reiki practitioners, Reiki business owners who might be interested in learning about the summit. But the way in which I am doing it is not a blanket email to any and all Reiki practitioners under the sun. Rather, it's very focused and pointed to where I am picking out Reiki practitioners, Reiki business owners who are established, who have connections, who know other Reiki practitioners, other Reiki business owners. Maybe they work with them. Maybe they have connections and relationships with them. Maybe they employ them. And what I'm doing is reaching out and simply letting them know about the summit 
and asking them if they'd be willing to share the information. I'm not saying, hey, do you want to sign up? I'm not saying, hey, you should sign up. I'm simply saying, hey, do you know of anyone who might be interested in learning about this summit? Please feel free to share it. The goal here, of course, is to build a Reiki business community, to lift one another up and to support one another. That's really what it's all about. That's what the summit is about. And so letting them know that and asking them if they're just willing to pass along the information, I give them the summit brochure and just invite them to share it with anyone who might be interested. That's it. There's no sales pitch. There's no ask, except, you know, please share this with anyone who might be interested. And so that kind of cold outreach can be really helpful in our Reiki business. By the way, if you are interested in learning more about the summit happening in November, live online, you can learn more at standingstoneshealing.com slash summit. Yes, the link is below. Yes, you can download the brochure there. And yes, you can send that along as a PDF to anyone who might be interested in learning all about the summit in November. But that kind of cold outreach that is personalized. So in those messages, I I am not sending a copy and paste message. I am sending a message that is personalized and letting them know that I know about them. I know about their business. I know about what they do, mentioning some specifics and simply inviting them to share the information if there's anyone who might be interested. Of course, they are welcome to delete my email they are welcome to forward it, pass it along, ignore it, whatever they want to do with it. But that kind of targeted cold outreach is so much more effective than a simple copy and paste message that is not personalized. And so this person who reached out to me about the affiliation, absolutely, this message should be personalized. There should be something specific in here about my work that they really like. This person mentions their YouTube channel. I'm assuming, but I don't know that they found me on YouTube. That's something that's really helpful to mention in your message, how you heard about them or found out about them. Um, but if that's the case, then to mention a YouTube video of mine that they have watched that, or that they have benefited from, the podcast, whatever it might be, that kind of personalization is so much more effective. When we put the focus on the other person in our cold outreach, rather than on us and what we do, it's going to be much more effective. It's that personalization piece that makes cold outreach not feel so cold and makes it feel much more warmer and friendlier. That's so important. What's also important in cold outreach is that we are making sure that the person we're reaching out to would probably be interested in hearing about what we are sharing with them. And so to send a, a message like the one I got from the young guy who was like, I know this is kind of random, LOL. It's like, it's totally random because I don't even know who you are. I don't know what your presentation is. I don't, I don't know what this is about. All I know is that you're some stranger who's reaching out to me asking if you want me to sit for your presentation. <laughs> Not enough information and no personalization. And so he, in sending that cold outreach, had no targeting going on, no way of knowing whether or not I might actually be interested in what he was doing. And so um, when we, if we do cold outreach, we want to make sure that we're personalizing it. We want to make sure that we're targeting it. We want to make sure that it's not coming across as spammy or scammy because we have checked out 
the person who we're sending the information to and have a good idea already that it's something that they might be interested in hearing about and that we've also really set up in a sense what's in it for them. Letting people know what's in it for them is really helpful and really important because ultimately our outreach is not about us. Ultimately, our contact and connections are not about us. Our business is not about us. It's about them. It's about helping other people. It's about others. And so when we can show what is in it for them, such as through the messaging in our cold outreach, then we're going to be much more effective. In this affiliation email that I received, I have no idea what's in it for me. Quite frankly, there's nothing in this for me. And so showing what's in it for the person you're sending it to is going to be much more effective than putting the focus on you and what you do and even what's in it for you. So do you do cold outreach in your Reiki business? Are you going to do cold outreach in your Reiki business? Drop it down below for us. Let us know. What do you think of cold outreach? Join us in the Reiki Business Collective and let us know all about it at facebook.com slash groups slash Reiki biz. Sending so many blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business. Thanks for tuning in to the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. Please like, share, subscribe, and send to a friend. Learn more about the Build Your Reiki Business program at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business.